When it comes to growing popcorn, there's a bunch of really awesome varieties out there to choose from, from smaller ones to larger ones. There's some really crazy colored ones out there too, which look really incredible and almost unreal. Today we're going to be growing one called strawberry popcorn, which is a great one for smaller gardens because the plants don't get too tall. But let's just get straight into the growing. We can explore the plants and how they grow along the way, and hopefully at the end we'll get to try some homegrown popcorn and see what it's like. So the seeds are quite small because they grow on a smaller sized cob, and this is an heirloom variety too, so you can save the seeds each year and grow it again and again. Corn works well if you directly sow it in the garden where you want it to grow, but I've just decided to put it in these seed trays here because I just don't want the birds digging it up and it means I can keep a bit of a closer eye on it. And I'm sowing these in late spring because they need a good three and a half to four months of nice warm weather to grow and mature. So now we'll just water them in and we'll wait and see what happens. Two and a half weeks later they've all sprouted and we're in summer now so they're putting on some growth pretty quickly. Okay, so they're continuing to grow and we're gonna plant these in the garden today. But check out the stems of these plants. They've got this beautiful red color, which is pretty cool that, you know, they start off with a red seed and that red kind of continues as the plant grows. I set up this garden just this season by putting a layer of cardboard on top of the grass to kill it off. And there's plenty of nice rich compost in here for the plants as well. And I've just put some straw over the top as a mulch to retain the moisture and stop the soil drying out as much in the sun. I always like to plant corn in a block of plants rather than in a line or as individual plants because they are wind pollinated so by being in a nice grouping of plants they can pollinate each other a bit better but I'll show you that process later on as the plants continue to grow. Alright so they've been putting on some nice growth but man it's just been so dry here lately and it's been kind of hard to keep on top of the watering. And corn plants do really like a lot of water. If you get a good amount of rain, you usually just see the corn plants take off and put on a big growth spurt. I prefer to do deep watering roughly every three to four days to encourage the roots to go down deeper and become a bit more resilient, rather than just giving them a bit of water each day, which can encourage shallow root systems. The popcorn plants have developed the tassels now on the top, which is the male parts that drop the pollen. And it's kind of cool that the pink color comes through on this part of the plant too. And the ears and the silks are forming lower down as well, which is the female flower where the pollen needs to land. And every single one of these silks is connected to an individual corn kernel. So each silk needs to have pollen land on it to form a nice full cob of corn. I deliberately planted my popcorn and sweet corn about a month apart because if they end up both dropping pollen at the same time and end up cross-pollinating, it can mess up the quality of your sweet corn and make some of the kernels taste not very nice. So keep that in mind if you're growing multiple varieties of corn, either plant them nice and separate or sow them around three to four weeks apart. In the future though, I'll probably plant the popcorn first and the sweet corn second because popcorn takes a bit longer to fully mature and dry on the plant, whereas sweet corn you can pick fresh and you don't need to leave it on there for that extra amount of time. So now we just need to wait until they're fully formed and the outside husk dries off and the plants turn brown and then they'll be ready to harvest. Alright so the popcorn's been dry for a couple of weeks and I haven't got around to harvesting it and we've just had a bunch of rain, a bunch of wind and the plants have just been smashed over. Uh, but we'll go over now and we can check them out and see what we can harvest from them. Oh man, looks like slaters have got into the tip of the corn and munched the kernels at the end. I probably would have avoided this if I had harvested them a little bit earlier, though it might have even been corn worms or something like that that caused the initial damage, I'm not entirely sure. Seems like quite a few of them might be affected too, but the bottom part is still completely usable, it just doesn't look quite as nice. Okay, so luckily not all of them were affected by slaters, we've got some nice ones here too. They just look so incredible, and you can kind of see now why these are called strawberry popcorn, they do actually look a bit like a strawberry. These are usually not ready to pop straight after harvesting, you need to let them dry and harden for at least a couple of weeks. So I'm just going to pull the husks back on these and leave them in the sun for a few days, and then I'll bring them inside and just place them onto a drying rack. So I started off using a spoon to scrape the kernels off the cob, but I found once I got started the rest of them came off fairly easily just by hand. I then sieved them in a colander to get out any debris, but I did have to do a few rounds of this since some of the kernels would still fall through the holes. So I'm just putting this onto a medium high heat and adding a little bit of oil. And I'm just putting a few test pieces in there so I know when it's at the right temperature for it to pop. If you're wondering what actually causes popcorn to pop, well inside of this hard sealed shell there's a little bit of water and some starch. And basically as the water starts to heat up it expands and turns to steam and the starch inside turns to a gel like substance. And as they kind of expand and build pressure on this outer shell it all explodes and as that starch comes out it rapidly solidifies into that fluffy white popcorn that we like to eat. 
All right, so they're starting to pop. So we'll take that off the heat. And I'm just gonna add a handful of popcorn kernels. Toss it around a bit. And this is just allowing them all to get up to the same temperature off the heat, rather than kind of having some burn and some not quite cook. So we'll leave that on there for about 20 seconds. All right, so we'll put it back on the heat now. All right, it's starting to pop, guys. All right, so it's slowed right down. Check this out. And there's a few bits in there that haven't fully popped, but not too many, really. Just a few. And we got a nice full bowl of popcorn. All right, time for the taste test. It's pretty good, it's got like a nice nutty flavor to it, but overall I'd pretty much just say it tastes like popcorn. The main difference though is that this one is a bit of a smaller type, so it's not quite as airy and fluffy as a larger type of popcorn. But you know, overall it's one that I grew myself, I'm super stoked with it, and you know, you just can't beat growing your own food or your own produce. So if you wanna grow yourself some popcorn, I definitely recommend it, I reckon it's a lot of fun, and you get something pretty cool out of it in the end. I just wanted to finish off by saying thank you so much to all of you guys for subscribing. I see that the channel's reached over 100,000 subscribers now, which is absolutely incredible. So thank you so much to all of you guys who have subscribed from, you know, the people who have followed me from the very beginning to all of the new guys over here. Welcome to the channel. And yeah, I just wanted to say I appreciate you all so much and I'm excited to have you along here on the journey. But yeah, that's it from me and this is Mashik Kenzie. Uh, I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. Thanks again for coming along and we'll see you in the next one.